Hello, and welcome to QDR Crusaders, Episode 9, for August 24th, 2012. Welcome back, guys. Uh, my name is Rainbow Plasma. I'm the organizer and editor of the podcast, well, usually. And today I'm joined by... I'm Photograph317. I'm the art organizer, and I handle all of the art submissions. Uh, I am Pinky Dash, and I do all the questions. And uh, we're also rejoined today by... Burned a one, and I am the special guest coordinator and quite good at it, if I don't say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy, back for not even 30 seconds, and he's already promoting himself. So Burned is back this week from Everfree Northwest. How was the trip, buddy? It was amazing. It was easily the best time I've ever had in my life at Everfree Northwest. I cannot even begin to describe it. I want to hear all about I'll it. I'll try. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'd fill up the podcast. <laughs> you have to tell us all the details after the podcast, but is there anything like... Like, what was, like, the best experience you had there? Easily the best experience, well, uh, kind of two, because, sorry, I'll try not to ramble too <laughs> long, but burned. Uh, <laughs> the first it. day that I was there, I got to go around the entire artist alley and talk to all of the artists, and I, of course, I was mentioning our show and all of that things. I mean, I talked to huge big names. I talked to people like Pixel Kitties, Cat Whitney, John Azeko, Giant Mosquito, uh, Milkshakes, and even more I can't even begin to name. So many awesome wow. artists. Easily the biggest shining moment of my entire convention was uh, s- uh, Saturday. Nope, Sunday. Uh, it started Saturday. Uh, but what happened Saturday was I was uh, the only person with an EFR badge with a camera at the uh, charity auction. And during this charity auction, uh, a signed derpy by Tabitha St. Germain, who actually misspelled her own name, so derpy derped on derpy. It was really <laughs> But um, this derpy in auction was put up last second. And a, uh, a man bought this derpy for $660. I'll bet everyone in the room wow. walked up to the guy who donated this derpy last minute and then handed it back to him in front of everyone. And it was the most, like, just touching thing that I have ever seen. And everyone in the crowd just stood up and applauded, running up, like, hugging this guy, like, shaking his hand. It was, it was magical, it was, like, seriously. But I was the only guy with a camera other than the... Um, live streaming camera going on so i run up and i get a photo of these two together it's like can i get a photo of you for efr because i'm pretending to be important so (laughs) what i ended up doing sunday uh the my shining moment of the convention sunday i go to the traveling pony museum ran by uh inky notebook and they have a gloss printer and they're printing off uh gloss prints of different artists that have donated their art to help support the traveling museum to go to different conventions and I asked, can you print this photo of the two that I took of the man who gave back the derpy and the person who donated to auction just for charity? And they printed it out for me. And then I used a few connections and talked to the staff and talked to some really awesome guys in the staff. And we got the poster signed and with thank you notes by every single one of the celebrities there, all the VAs, uh, the singing voices, and uh, anyone who was um, there and helping out with in that, who used that worked on My Little Pony including Travis, the guy who donated the therapy, got him to sign as well. And I got to give this gift to um, the person who gave back the derpy. I got to give it to him personally, live, on stage, in front of the entire convention, and on every oh, wow. radio. And yeah, was that was easily... during the closing ceremonies. That was really yeah. awesome to see. <laughs> you can actually check it out on YouTube, but it's not about me. Like It's it's about both of them, but it was awesome to be the guy that be able that was able to like share their story with the world like to its full potential. So, like, that was easily my shinest, uh, shining moment of the convention, to be able to go on stage and give a speech about how amazing the both of them are. Another awesome experience at Everfree was uh, I got to, again, meet all of the awesome celebrities and people on the show who I respect, and then even big musician names like Mando Pony and Acoustic Brony, both uh, Ed and Jimmy, because Acoustic Brony is an uh, acoustic pair. Um, and Ed and Jimmy are awesome. And at one point when I was getting uh, the Cutie Marker Sager, Cutie Marker Sager signatures, um, uh, Mando Pony and, Acoust- and the acoustic uh, Brony pair were um, just hanging out in the voice actor room, and uh, I was like, I wish I had a present for these two because they're so awesome, and like I love them both. I'm a huge fan, so like I got it. I had just printed uh, shirts, some T-shirts for the confi- My Little Pony convention, so I ran all the way back to my car and then came back, and I managed to give Mando Pony, Ed, and Jimmy from Acoustic Brony um, T-shirts that I had printed of vectors from the My Little Pony Vector Club. And I got a picture giving it to them and stuff, and it was um, it was super it was super awesome to be able to give that to them. And even Amanda Pony wore my shirt on the last day of the convention, so I got some pictures of him wearing my shirt. And then Amanda Pony, Michelle Kriber, and I 
or all um, with Man, uh, Man Funny wearing my shirt. Uh, that was super cool. But and I got to meet you know William Anderson and all all the big names and shake all the voice actors' hands and just be like thank you for doing what you do. So conventions, man. Uh, this by far Everfree Northwest has been amazing. So I'd highly recommend for next year. And we're gonna have a Everfree North is gonna have a huge like larger outlet, be larger than this year. So again, be a lot of fun. Cool. Aww. Well, I'm sure I'm sure we'll be hearing stories, <laughs> and I'm sure we'll be getting uh, <laughs> residuals from that convention for a little while in the show. So we're really excited uh, that you went, and uh, it seemed mm-hmm. to go really, really well, and you had a lot of fun. So I think this has kind of improved our impression <laughs> for conventions in the future. Yeah, definitely. At at one point, um, you actually texted me and were like, "You should see if you could get any of the like celebrities or people on the show who can uh, see if they'd be interested in doing the show." I was like, all right, that's not a bad idea. So I walk up to final draft. Um, our uh, kind of like our boss, or the leader of EFR. What is what is <laughs> get his actual description? But I walk up to Final Draft. And I'm like, do you think it'd be too much to ask to maybe talk to Sibzy Raven and see if we could get them to come on QDR Crusaders? And he looks at me, he's like, well, that's not a bad idea. Hold on, come with me. So he drags me over to where Sibzy and Raven <laughs> are sitting before this convention panel started. And he walks up to them. He's like, hey, Sibzy Raven, this is Burned One. Uh, he does a show on our network called QDR Crusaders, and he was curious if you'd both be interested in doing an interview or something on our show. And they were both like, oh, blah, blah, and like kind of asked me about it. And I kind of gave a description of what they might be doing. Like, oh, yeah, it doesn't sound like a bad idea. That's not a converse, con, uh, a, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? That's not a confirmation by any means, but it was really cool to be able to walk up to Sibzy and Raven and be like, oh, yeah. But so yeah. maybe in the future. That's a maybe. <laughs> well, Big maybe. Well, but that'd be we awesome. can't <clears throat> beat around the bush any longer. Last week, we promised you guys that we would have Veggie 55 on the show. Unfortunately, that's not a reality, and let me tell you why. It be- came down to a little bit of scheduling issue, but Burnt came up to us a couple of days ago with a really weird proposition. He said, <laughs> hey guys, I want to organize the entire podcast and tell you nothing about it. <laughs> so here we are, we're sitting down and we're recording, knowing zero... We're flying blind. We are completely yeah. flying blind, we have no idea what is going to happen. So, I mean, I don't know what else to say other than to hand over to Burnt and just... Hope he doesn't mess it up. <laughs> Usually we put in at least a couple I'm hours sure of prep, won't. but I don't know. Okay, I trust you, Burn. Go ahead. All right. We, we have we have no, no clue so, what's going on. So. Basically, the theme for this week is a complete surprise. No one here knows what the theme is. So I thought it would be a great little opportunity to maybe do a surprise exactly for my three other podcast members here. Because I became great friends with these three, and I love all three of them, and they're just the most amazing people I've ever gotten the chance to work with. So I made it my mission when I go to this convention to each get each and every single one of them something special. So I have something special for each one of these, but they have no idea what it is. And I'm going to pre- oh present God. it to them one by one. <laughs> and neither oh of them know what artist it is or anything, but each one of the artists who I contacted, I got confirmation with that they, confirmation that is, that they would be interested in doing an interview on our show. <laughs> okay. Okay. <All> right. Okay. <laughs> oh <my God>. um, <laughs> so, our first little um, part of this surprise uh, theme, and in our theme, we're going to be talking about the thing that I present, and then another thing by the artist that presented it. So, the okay, first cool. thing that I have lined up is a present for Pinky Dash, and okay. I'm going to link that now and get everyone here to open it. So, I'll have a little fun with editing there. But yeah, please, the please excuse thing. us. We have to open something in. Oh my god. Oh my still letting, still letting, still letting. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, uh, what? Letting, letting, letting. So, oh this god. is a piece by KDW on DeviantArt, and I got it hand commissioned by her at the convention, oh and this god. is Pinky Dash's OC. Oh, wow. Out of everyone in the artist alley, she easily had the <laughs> cutest, overall just amazingly cutest art style of anyone there. And I know Pinky Dash loves simple and cute, and this artist does it amazingly. And That's I don't amazing. think any of us in the podcast group have even <laughs> seen her work other than from this convention. So I'm super excited to actually link this piece and like her work. But So what oh, do you wow. guys think? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave that up to Pinky Dash to say what he would like. Yeah. His present, but... That's actually, it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> so I'm going to be emailing this all the way to, or not emailing, excuse me. I'm going to be mailing this physically all the way to Australia to get it to Pinky Dash. Oh, what? Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can oh email something god. physical. Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, anyway. I, I, I know, I know, Pinky Dash's next vector project. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can d- bring myself to do it. Oh my yeah, god! Right? Look at those wings; those are so cool. 
<laughs> I love this artist style oh though because we're still doing a show about art. If you guys, if I can't get you a little too not too speechless, but <laughs> if you look at uh, Pinky Dash's eyes, there you see the sketching in his eyes and how yes. like the oh, cross hatching. Yeah. Yes. She does an amazing job with that, and even little details and feathers and his wings. And you notice the outline of the character. How we were talking about that, his outline strokes are thicker than the inside details. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I was talking to her a little about it, and she actually uses different sized pens. So for the details, she'll use a smaller uh, tip of a pen, and then for the outside of the character, for his strokes, to show you know where the character ends, she'll use a thicker pen. So just like we were talking about on the show. How did no, you get a... this? How did, wow. did you did you like really pull awesome. up like a reference picture and like give it to her? And I did. Then, like, I back in got a few or... pictures of Pinky Dash's OC, and I was like, I would love if you would draw my friend here in the most adorable pose that you could. Think they of. did very very well. I love the fact that like the expression is so Pinky Dash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even with the eyebrow raised. It's like, hey there. <laughs> it, it, especially with the eyebrow raised. <laughs> I'm adorable. I love you, Burn. <laughs> Uh, love you too, buddy. And you, KDW, if you're watching this. I'm excited. It's not even my present. I think that's awesome. I know. Oh, we're not it's, done yet. We're so not quite done with the Okay, yet. so you said you you also had another piece by the same artist. I do have a piece by about? the same artist. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm going to link to that. Kind of kind of split up the uh, the craziness. So each of these, um, well, one of these and the two others, they're actually, uh, what are they? They're, tr- they're done on a traditional medium. I think they're done on... Uh, kind of tan bristol i think is the paper and it's all pens and like paints i think i think they're paint pens and maybe maybe some paint but it's all done traditionally and it's all done by this artist in her own original style and luna and celestia are just amazing and then the derpy on the left was actually um actually at the convention for sale as an original piece and i could not resist but to pick up uh, the derper on the left so she's actually keeping me company in front of me on my desk <laughs> oh cool yeah hey. hey. huh Wow. I can't believe I haven't heard of this artist. She must be either new or just uh, so underrated because this is amazing. I yeah, can't I'm not, yeah, I, I don't her. know why I haven't heard of her either, but her name's Katie Williams or Katie uh, minus w. w. Yeah, dash yeah. W, Katie w, dash w, w on deviant.com. I'm already on their page and watching them right now. <laughs> and just like the amount of adorableness in Derpy and then like just how amazingly beautiful like Celestria looks and all the details on the flowers, the characters. And I love how she uses white highlights on the tips mm. of the characters, like in the hair and mm-hmm. Derpy's hair and Derpy's wings and Luna's hair, even on the limbs and stuff. It's just I can't even begin. It has so many amazing things we've been talking about in all of our episodes. It's <laughs> really close to show style, but in traditional media, which is amazing. Yeah, definitely. This is a perfect I example really like, of like artists yeah. that we need to start spotlighting because <laughs> I, I cannot believe like we we probably look at more art than the regular person. I think that's fair to say, especially because we have an art show, so that's kind of now we our job. Have jobs. to go through art, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, I I've never I might have seen a couple of things, but looking through right now, I've never seen anything by this person, and that's. It looks like she's fairly new. She I don't have, know if like, she submits her stuff to. I I don't know if I think ponies might be a new thing to her. When I was looking through her DeviantArt gallery, um, ponies was kind of a, a minority of what was in her gallery. Right. But uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know if she submits to all the big DeviantArt groups either. So when she does a like a pony work, if she goes and submits to all the really big ones that everyone subscribes to, I'm not quite sure. I don't think she does because I haven't seen them. But I haven't been keeping track too much because of Everfree Northwest. It looks like she's. It looks like she's kind of done sporadic. Um, pony stuff so yeah. well, that's still that's still amazing i mean i mean even doing sporadic but doing it amazingly like i really love <laughs> I, I, really the celestia like i'm not i'm not i think i've said this on the show before i'm not a biggest fan of celestia it's a good character but you know i wouldn't say i love the character but it looks really really good in this picture yeah, yeah. i like the hair yeah. i think the hair gets me i don't like celestia, the hair but <laughs> well like here right they're each have my each one has a favorite like a thing about it that I love. Like, Celestia is easily my favorite with how, like, adorable she is and how she looks and her style. And uh, Luna, I love her hair. I think she has the best hair. And then on Derpy's, Derpy's easily the most adorable by far. <laughs> <laughs> that face. She's yeah, right. usually the most adorable in any in <laughs> so <a> picture. Derpy. <laughs> yeah. So cute. She's chewing that muffin. But this artist no, definitely no, has no, no. a super original style. And I mean, the white highlights is very significant and unique. And then she, for the characters, she also uses a constant outline color. For uh, Celestia, her outline is all constantly kind of that dark purple. And then for Luna, she has kind of like a greenish outline for the entirety of her, except for her <laughs> hair, that is. And then Derpy has um, a black outline, I think that is. So, But it, it's consistent, unlike the show, where her uh, the hair would have its own outline color and the body would have its own outline color. 
whereas these are almost not very colorful. They're just very basic um, outlines, but it creates that kind of original style and more of a traditional cartoon look than it would at your normal uh, My Little Pony show accuracy. It's really common to do that, to do the black outlines instead of the colored ones. It's a, it's a nice, easy way to create kind of a different style. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything right. else you guys would like to note about this artist? No, just just it's, definitely all the people oh watching, God, go so check cute. out katie-w.dvnr.com. dot yeah. dot com. I I'm gonna definitely like like Mickey Dash said. Like that's the first thing I'm gonna do is go and watch her. That's really I've already done it. That's really amazing. <laughs> yep, I've, I've just done it right there. Teach you to it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I did. Um, everyone go check her out because she's awesome and she's done an awesome um, picture of my OC. Her <laughs> adorable <laughs> things. This is just her kind of um, artistic style. She actually does. Overly ridiculously adorable things. I don't have a picture to link because they're not pony related, but they're like little eagles or little um, like baby eagles or ladybugs or things like that. But they're so ungodishly adorable, and that's what attracted me <laughs> to her table at the at the artist alley. And I did uh, talk to her quite a bit, and she said she would be interested in doing an interview. So um, we're going to try to get in contact with her, and maybe into the future. But it could be a well, far away into the future, considering our podcasts are week by week by week, and we do have a few guests already laid out. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Well, that'd be cool. Huh? <laughs> well, um, hopefully this podcast isn't too short, but we'll kind of scoot right along here to yeah, our huh? next present. Yeah. So the next person we have in line is Flutter Guy. Oh, you're killing me, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I have Flutter Guy's present here, and then let me just link it for everyone. And then Flutter Guy's internet's kind of slow, so we'll have to wait for Flutter Guy. Because <laughs> you are in Austria right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm on a business trip, and yeah. <laughs> yeah guy, all the way in Austria and still doing a podcast. Right? <laughs> it's loading, but oh my god. <laughs> 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 it's adorable. Burned, I love you so much. <laughs> I had to mute myself because I wanted to hear. Yeah, that, I was, was trying to. Yep, yeah, that wasn't. All right, anything. so this piece we <laughs> oh have gosh. is by the artist named Giant Mosquito, and he's the artist in charge of doing the Doctor Adorable Tumblr, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar no with. No way. So this is by oh Doctor Adorable himself, and we actually just <laughs> featured in our water episode, um, Pinky, Pinky in the Rain. He's also the artist who did Pinky in the Rain, and uh, uh, this is again is Giant Mosquito, and uh, commissioned by him. And this is Dr. Adorable being adorable for Flutter Guy 317. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you have a Dr. Adorable shirt, don't you? You love, you love I that. I do, yes. That was that was my first pony shirt. And oh. right now it currently is my only pony she shirt. She does but... indeed have a PhD in adorableness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. This is uh, burned. I was not expecting anything <laughs> like this. I know. <laughs> I... Unfortunately for our other two podcast members, I got you the largest amount of um, presents. Left. Oh. It just came out to be awkward oh. timing, and you happened to ask for Michelle Kreiber's CD, but you didn't ask for her signature, Amanda Pony's signature, but you got both those as well. So. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no way. <laughs> if, if, I make, if I may make a terrible reference, the presents have been doubled. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm officially in love with you. I was going to keep this as a surprise, but since we do have an audience, I would like to share with them. Unfortunately, this is heartbreaking for me because they were selling um, signatures from any all the voice actors for $20, which was really steep on my wallet, and I ran out of money pretty quick. But <laughs> I wasn't able to get uh, big voice actor signatures for everyone in the podcast. But when I was getting that present for um, Jason, the man who gave back the derpy, I ran into Andrea Libman. And I just, I was just running by her and I was like, oh, I'm doing this present for, um, getting this present for the man to give back the derpy. Did you hear about that at Cherry Dark? She's like, oh yeah, I heard about it. That's amazing. This awesome present. Awesome. She signed it, wrote a big thing. And I was like, oh, oh, wait, before you go. And on my, uh, chest, on my bag that I was carrying my derpy mail bag, I had a pin that I had got from someone at the convention. Just a little, um, shirt pin. It's about an inch big. But on this shirt pin is Flutter Guy's vector of, angry um angry fluttershy his your angry no fluttershy way. vector was on this pin <laughs> and i was like oh my god can i buy that for music like, oh these are free and handed it to me so i was wearing this on my uh bag super proudly because it was going to be a surprise present for you but when i bumped into <laughs> andrea libman i was like oh, oh, i don't have anything for you to sign hey can you sign this button on my bag and andrea libman signed your pin with your vector on my bag <laughs> and you have the only oh voice god. actor signature unfortunately oh my for the other god two wow oh 
what are the chances that like your oh vector God. is on a pin <laughs> which is by the I way know, right? we, we run into quite often as vector artists we have a bunch of our stuff goes on t-shirts or pins or so we're okay with it it's all right mm. um yeah. so we'll see we, that we walk around it, actually. and stuff but to get your vector on a pin and then oh wow at that time <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> it was a guy walking what? around i forget his etsy store I'm going to put in a little edit here. I couldn't remember it when I was recording, but his Etsy store is called Drakenrath Designs. Um, so if you go to www.etsy.com slash shop slash Drakenrath Designs, you can buy a huge selection of My Little Pony buttons with all sorts of different expressions, all from the My Little Pony Vector Club. And um, there's a little shout out to him if you'd like to get some uh, My Little Pony buttons. But he's trying to make a button store specifically using um, vectors from the My Little Pony Vector Club. And he's not making a large amount of profit on it. He just really likes the vectors from the club and he wants to be able to like spread them around. So Flutter Guy's vector. Actually, I think I also have one of your vectors as well, Rainbow Plasma. I'm pretty sure you did the Pinkie, Pinkie Pie um, Boring Face. Oh, yeah, And I'm pretty sure that vector is also on a pin, which I do have on my bag. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I have the, I have the <laughs> most common one used because it's the most complete. Anyway. Um, yeah. Let's go back to this art piece <laughs> by Giant Mosquito. <laughs> Again, a uh, super awesome style. This was drawn a little bit quicker than uh, the one Pinky Dash did because Giant Mosquito had a really large commission list, um, and a lot of people were happy to see him there. But this uses a similar style to Pinky Dash's present, but a little bit different. The, this artist plays with thickness of lines a lot more than Pinky Dash's present. In Pinky Dash's present, the outside of the lines... KDW used like a consistent thickness with the outside and then a consistent thickness with the inside. But on this one, the artist, it's very uneven. Everything uses varying line line thicknesses. So the outside, again, is really thick. And then on the hairs, you have super thinness. But then on things like the eyes, the eyelashes, and like the chin and neck and the clothes, they're still kind of thick and medium thickness. And he plays with that a lot. But there's a lot heavier lines than in the, the other commission. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, I can, I can definitely see that. It, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I mean, that, that's that's. I, it, I think the difference is that Giant Mosquito does a lot more like more show accurate stuff. I, it, it's hard to say, like it's hard to say that, but I think his style leans more towards the show. I mean, if you look at pieces like we showed his um, Pinky singing in the rain, obviously that's not it. But like his Doctor Adorable blog definitely leans towards show accurate. Mm-hmm. So. And s- since I have links for all of the artists, the link um, for this one is a little bit unconventional, but I have a link to just straight up his Doctor Ask Doctor World Adorable blog. On his DeviantArt, a lot of the art featured there is Doctor Adorable, with one of the coolest pieces being um, a Half-Life 2 reference with Fluttershy, which technically she's not Doctor Adorable, but that was the most put-together piece. But um, as far as reference goes, there's a link there. You guys can open it up for um, <laughs> the Doctor Doctor Adorable Doc- <laughs> Ask Dr. Adorable Tumblr. And the first post right there with a Dr. Adorable shock face was is probably one of the best references that I'll put on the screen for this artist's um, painted art <laughs> that style. Great. And this is all done digitally. <laughs> digitally, His entire Ask Tumblr blog is done by um, using a digital medium, so like a, a tablet, things like that, to whereas this commission is done uh, traditionally, obviously, with uh, pens. <laughs> yeah. What's the puppy factory? <laughs> <laughs> is that is that the I, is that the artwork that we're going to be critiquing from him, or do you have something else that you're planning on? This this artwork will work for critiquing on him. Okay, well, I, I was just going to mention because uh, <laughs> I I follow Doctor Adorable's Ascalon blog, um, and I've noticed that the kind of style that he goes for is not necessarily changing the face or changing the way it looks. A lot of it has to do with shading. And um, you can tell, especially in Dr. Adorable's hair, it's always like got much more shading to give it a 3D look. It's very dark underneath the little hoop, and it's got tons of like uh, white highlights in it and, and things like that to give it extra shading. So I think that's what that's what Giant Mosquito does really well. I really like the um, the shading on the eyes too, because it yeah. gives them a bit more of a 3D feel. Bit of a depth. Like um, in in the show, eyes are pure white, like all the way through. There's no gradients or anything on them, um, at least the eyeball. So uh, this gives it a bit, yeah, like a 3D depth kind of feel. That's also something when I was taking my art class that um, my art teacher, a point that he um, really made when we um, when he was teaching us how to draw like uh, anatomy and facial features. One of the big mistakes that artists will make when making traditional art, not specifically ponies, is they'll leave the eyes white. So they'll leave the eye white white, 
people's eye whites are not white. They're not pure white. There's actually shading and the shadows in there because their eyes are round. So whenever he makes Fluttershy, or whenever Dr. Adorable makes Fluttershy's eyes, he's using that painted, more realistic look. So he shades in the eyes, which is what you would do because eyes are round. So it really creates that roundness and more realistic look to her eyes. Um, but as far as show accuracy goes, it's just vectors and it's just um, paths and things like that. So you wouldn't shade in eyes. But when you're doing um, a paint, more a traditional painted feel like this or realistic painted feel, this is your actual painting and uh, the ponies are more realistic. So the artist will shade in the eyes when he uh, does scenes and things like that. Especially in the um, link below this or the two posts below this when he has Fluttershy laughing. He uses really, or Dr. Adorable laughing, excuse me. He uses really <laughs> heavy shading to give like that ominous feel, and he really goes to town on shading Fluttershy. Yeah. Again, I really like lines. Very, yeah. it's, it's very different from the show. So it creates just, even that little bit can set it out from the show. In that panel that I was talking about, he has everything kind of outlined somewhat normally. Or no, it looks like the entire thing's outlined in um, black. I was going to say it would be interesting if he had it. Yeah, it's all outlined in black. I was going to say it would be interesting if he outlined it normal, and then when he got to Fluttershy laughing, if he did it in black and then went back to normal. But it's all in black. On the top yeah. post, however, he uses uh, the more show-accurate feel where the outlines actually have color. Uh, I, I was just going to say I really like the method that he uses for shading um, because like a lot of shading you'll see is blurred, like uh, kind of a consistent gradient between colors. Um but I, I feel like he tends to use like uh, more discrete colors to get the shading correct. Um, maybe not on the eyes and stuff like that, but on Flutter Guy's main, or Fluttershy's mane and uh, the goggles and stuff like that, you can really see the, the distinct different colors, and it really um, it works very well. Yeah, definitely. Piggy Dash, <laughs> Plasma, have any, no. either of you have anything? <laughs> I don't. I just. I'm, <laughs> I'm, st I'm still choked up. If you, <laughs> if you, if you didn't notice. <laughs> You're gonna send this to us. Oh, That's man. awesome. I am. I'm. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm glad that you <laughs> liked uh, the Doctor Adorable uh, commission by Giant Mosquito. Thanks, Burned. Anything to mention on your present? Anything cool about that you want to throw out there? Uh, about my present? Yeah. Anything? Um. I I love it. <laughs> I love Angel Bunny. Uh, yeah, looks yes. like this. Don't Help me! I don't want to be hugged. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> I think Angel Bunny. I was looking at him. It looks like he just has a cute face and like he has his mouth open and he's waving. I think that's how he's probably the only person that does like Angel Bunny. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess if you if you have the, if that's the mouth, not the nose, then yeah, she, he looks happy. But no, that, that's I'm definitely saying that as a help me. She's going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to use me in one of it's her not, experiments. It's not a happy face. That's a please help me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if there's any nothing else that either of you like to add, we can always move along to our last present. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> for our last present for. Our uh, last but not least, uh, our editor and our ho our general host and introductee, we have Rainbow Plasma. And for Rainbow Plasma's gift, by far he has the most celebrity of artists who managed to uh, get his present commission at the con. And let me just link that for our group here. Oh my god, is that... <laughs> <laughs> Did you give me a sketch by JJ? <laughs> <laughs> so for Rainbow Dad, for Rainbow Plasma's present, we have his OC um, uh, Ember doing a duck face, courtesy <laughs> of John. Hizeko. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! John Hizeko did manage to make it to Everfree Northwest, and he uh, kind of a last minute, but he did make it there, and he was doing <laughs> sketch commissions all day and had tons of them. It was a huge lineup, but I managed to get uh, Rainbow Plasma's uh, OC on the list. And I love when John Azeko does duck faces, and I thought, what would be more fitting for Rainbow Plasma than a duck face? <laughs> Why would you think of me? Why would you think of a duck face? I'm <laughs> to seriously talk about what you think of me. But no, that's... A... Because it's Bright Ember. She's like that. Oh, uh, goodness. <laughs> I just... Oh pitch, I, I know what Rainbow Plasma looks like in real life, too, and just picturing him with a duck face. Ah, uh, she's priceless. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe you got me a JJ. <laughs> So, 
J- by far, JJ's was also the quickest sketch, and you can kind of tell that in his work. Um, the lines are always really quick, but with JJ, his lines are always super quick and super precise, and they're always spot on to where you want them for the character proportions. And you can see he uh, the blue undersketch that we were talking about in our sketching episode, uh, how undersketch is really important. When JJ does his sketches, he starts with a blue pencil, and he does the undersketch for the character. And then this is a grayscale sketch, so he went over it in uh, black and then shaded it in with um, a gray pen. They're uh, soft-tipped, like, paint pens. Um, they actually have, like, a soft brush, brush felt tip uh, when he was going. I was watching him uh, do this, and it was kind of, it was super cool to watch him work, how fast he drew lines and how, how he did everything, and in the eyes and in the hair. Uh, and he, it was, and he, it was he really cool to see John Ziggler, so. Yeah, <laughs> even the cutie mark on there. <laughs> Anything you'd like to add about it? Maybe it's any comments on the style, anything like that? <laughs> what? <laughs> what am I supposed to? <laughs> it's a sketch by JJ that so you're going to be sending to me. That's amazing. <laughs> this is why we have more art by the artist lined up. <laughs> and that, that's what's even more amazing: the fact that you said like all of the all of the ones that you got commissions from were all interested oh, yeah. in coming on so the show. So get to that. So That's, I was talking to John Azeko and I was asking him like, "Would you be interested in doing uh, an interview on Everfree Radio and Cuter Crusaders?" And he was sitting, and when I was talking to him, and he was like, "Yeah, I've done uh, interviews before on Everfree Radio. I've done quite a few, but I'd be interested, or I'd be totally down to do another." So I'm like, "Awesome!" So I got his card and I got his email address, and um, I'm gonna be I'm going to be contacting him. He's definitely I'm going to. He said that he would be willing on the show, but again, this might be really far down the line because we we are on a week by week basis. But in the future, maybe a couple months down the line, be looking forward to John Azeko himself. Okay, I'm going to yeah. announce something on the podcast because this has the, two things, but the, one of them is bigger. So I'm going to do the first thing. I'm going off to university in about a week. So f- for a week there, it'll be a little bit iffy if I'm on the podcast or not. But I'm going to have a pony section at my university, and this is going in my pony section whenever it gets <laughs> to me. That is so amazing. <laughs> and second of all, this art piece has yes. convinced me. I've been debating going off to university. What should I do about my online stuff? Because my emails, like my older emails with my other online name has been kind of filling up. And, you know, I, I figure it's a new point in my life. And so I was considering changing my online name to just be Rainbow Plasma and to just go with that. And I've been debating it. And this picture has convinced me I'm going 100% <laughs> Rainbow Plasma on the internet now. I, <laughs> I, I, what else am I supposed to do after this? That's, that's it's signed by. With... <laughs> I can't <laughs> I just, wait to see the vector. This has convinced me. I'm, I'm going, like, I'm going duck, 100% yes. <laughs> Rainbow Plasma on the internet now. I had a super awesome <laughs> conversation with John Azego too about duck faces. He said, like, we were we were talking, he's like, it just whenever women do duck faces, it's always hilarious and awful, and it's always super hideous, and I hate it. And I'm just like, it is it is awful. It's like, I don't know why people do that. And he's like, it's super hilarious, though, when women do duck faces. But when ponies do duck faces, it's adorable. And it's funny to have that joke. Yeah, I, I, I saw his I saw his princesses one. That one, that one was pretty awesome. I, th- I think I saw the, the three and the, and the iPhone in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, that was the original one, but I think uh, John Azeko actually made a specific print just for this convention where he added in Lauren Faust, so it has the three princesses and then Lauren Faust doing um, duck face in the mirror with the iPhone. And I also picked that up as well. That's even cooler, though, because it feels like I'm part of the series now. Yeah, <laughs> you are part of I'm the I'm sure duck he's done face other <laughs> commissions with other OCs and stuff, but that, like, I think all I've seen is my... He said I was the only person who asked for a duck face, so... <laughs> really? At the time, though, that this was the first day of the. Campaign. So yeah, <laughs> part of the series now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we do have more art by John Hazeko, and it it isn't duck a uh, duck face, unfortunately. But let me link this as uh, oh. another large picture. I actually took this picture with my. Just go to Google camera. and type "pony." You will find the John Hazeko. Yeah. So I'll link that, <laughs> and while it loads, I'll talk about it a little. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, this this uh, picture we have of blind for John Azeko is actually a print that was for sale specifically at his table at Everfree Northwest. This was a print and a piece of art made specifically for the convention and a print only for sale at the convention. And it's Gamer Luna sitting atop her gaming throne. Um, and she has um, her uh, famous headset on. And it this again, this is a picture um, with my camera and I cropped it out. I have my friend holding up. Uh, in the background there, but it's still a uh, pretty good quality because it's quite a large print. But I got uh, this is a present to me. That's awesome. I got you it pick, signed you by the John two Zico things from, from JJ that I would appreciate the most. You you picked oh like God, no way. 
I I know it's a present for you. Don't get me wrong. But um, you picked you you picked uh an OC of mine <laughs> to, from from JJ, and then you picked my favorite is cre- my favorite creation of his, which is Gamer Luna, because I'm a huge gamer. <laughs> I would love to talk about this picture. Let's talk about this picture. She's adorable. Oh, yeah. There's video games. Look at all the references. Wow. Yeah. The PS Vita, which is Vinyl Scratch. <laughs> right. The iPhone with Derpy Calling, which is a muffin picture. Yeah. Yeah. You've got <laughs> Call, Call of Pony. Pony. you got Pony, Pony Gear Solid. Solid. You even got the 3DS with a Luna skin on it. Yeah, saw that one. <laughs> you, and if you if you look right under right under her front uh, elbow there, you've got Sea uh, Pony Lyra. <laughs> Some sort of pinky and a chicken. I get is that Pong or <laughs> just Pony or Nintendo DS? Yeah, he's got a Mario Pony. He's got like uh, he's got like a Mario Pony in the bottom right. He's got Pony <laughs> Gear Solid underneath the oh. Pony Vita, PS Vita, and then he's got a uh, Call of Ponies. Again, to the left. Yeah, and then so... Derpy's actually calling Luna up on oh, her yeah, iPhone. Yeah. With a little Gamer muffin Luna's, for the like, picture. There's, there's a ton of stuff that JJ does. There is an absolute ton of stuff that JJ does. And um, he's, he does tons of blogs and he does uh, you know sketches and other things. But I think I think Gamer Luna is my, hands down my favorite. He, he does a lot of awesome uh, Gamer Luna stuff on some on some of his tumblers. We'll just leave yeah. it at some of his, his tumblers. Favorite tumbl- but... his, my favorite tumbler of his, I can't mention. <laughs> We're all. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we're all big fans of his tumblers because yeah. they're always in good taste. <laughs> always. No. Yes. Most of the time. <laughs> in better taste than most. But uh, overall, like JJ's style, he has again a really unique style. On this piece specifically, he uses really thin outlines for the character, but they still have color. They're not black outlines. So if you look at Luna's outlines, they're actually Lighter, kind of yeah. like a bright white, and it's a great. Yeah, it's a great to have that highlight. And I think he uses a little bit of both, like dark highlights and dark highlight, uh, dark highlights and light highlights. So, like, on her wings and on the bottom of her front hoof in the background, and even on her back hoof uh, on top of the games, he uses, like, a dark blue. But on the majority of Luna, he uses that really bright, uh, kind of a light blue color on everything, including, like, the horn and her hair. And it makes her really pop out of everything. It's really cool, especially her wing. It's easily the thing that JJ does the best is the it's, it's the eyes and the face in general. Specifically the eyes, but the face in general it's something always screams JJ whenever you see it. You can always tell when it's his. Yeah, you can definitely tell when it's his JJ sketch. Yeah, because I don't know what it is that he does with the eyes, but there's something special. And even the shading in this is just awesome. Like the shading in the wing, the limbs, especially the face. Um, it's it's again really unique to JJ, and it's always really smooth. It's pretty consistent too. If you think of if you think of a light source coming from like above and maybe a little bit to the left then it's pretty consistent for me. I mean, I don't... You've got the shading coming from yeah. her hair under her face. Direction, yeah. The Direction neck shading that's solid. coming from her muzzle, which makes sense. Everything's along the bottom. It looks great. <laughs> I haven't actually seen this picture before. Was this really just a print? I really like the way that... Like, did he, did he make this specifically mm-hmm. for a print? But Yeah, he made this picture oh, okay. specifically for a print oh, okay. to sell at Evergreen Northwest. I went to go to his DeviantArt to see if I could snag a high-definition photo of it, it didn't exist because it on his DeviantArt he's like I have two special prints for sale at um, Everfree Northwest. He had a uh, chrysalis print and this print, and they were specifically oh, for okay. the convention. And he actually sold out of this print wow. the first day. <laughs> wow! Actually, was one of the everyone loves gamer loot. <laughs> wow! <laughs> yes, I think it's because of the crossover <laughs> between people who game and people who watch ponies. It's a pretty high crossover. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else on the style you guys would like to mention? Uh, I really like the way that he did her mane and tail. I do indeed. Because um, it it almost, it looks like really glossy. Um, because there are those those highlights. Um, it reminds you. Uh, she's yeah, like, yeah, I'm still a princess. <laughs> really, really well done. I can just imagine having this as a glossy print. It would be so cool. That that expression just screams like, yeah, in a game. I'm What's a princess. Yeah. Deal with it. <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> Come at me. Yeah. Oh, come at me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not sure what expression you see in that face. Bro. <laughs> uh, reading, Maybe I'm looking at a different number. Reading, yeah, reading between the lines on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You just got pwned by a princess. Well, I love my present. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I just accidentally flicked back to your duck face. <laughs> yes. JJ, <Yep>. wow. <laughs> That's really cool. JJ himself. 
No, he was a really cool guy. He was really friendly when I was talking. Yeah, to him. I'm a I'm a person who likes when people drop names. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a I'm a little bit of a, <laughs> of a celebrity guy. So this is really awesome. <laughs> so that way the ducks really the duck face is really fitting, right? So it's all <laughs> yep. Yeah. Anyway, um, after after the convention and after Sunday on the last day, I ended up going uh, to dinner with the EFR crew, which is really cool. I really appreciate that invite. Um, Final draft invited me. It's really cool to get to meet with everyone and talk with TechRad and uh, uh, LT Moose and everybody. Um, and I actually invited uh, Jason Long as well, the man who uh, gave back the Derby at the charity auction. And he is a really cool guy. I can't wait to look for. I really look forward to meeting him next year. He said he was wasn't going to do any more uh, uh, pony conventions, but after this convention, everyone like the reception that uh, he was given for like his charitable act was just amazing. So he's definitely going to do more oh, cool. more uh, conventions. But off, offside a little. The point of that was when we went out to. Uh, a dinner with the EFR crew, we all just bombarded Denny's, like, 25 of us. <laughs> <laughs> it was ridiculous. And we had to take up, like, five, six tables. But um, while while we were at Denny's uh, eating dinner, actually, John Azeko and then uh, Gary Gilcrest were both there um, eating uh, eating at separate tables. And it was really cool. I got to talk with uh, Gary Gilcrest for quite a while. He's a really cool guy. It was awesome to uh, listen to him rant. And then uh, I didn't get to talk to John Azeko at, the, um, at Denny's, but he was a uh, uh, doing his own thing, eating, eating dinner, of course. Super tired, I imagine. <laughs> I'm just making amazing schedules all day. Yeah, I, I imagine he'd get quite tired after that. Yeah, probably. Well, you were mentioning the guy said, you know, this is going to be his last convention, but then he went to this one, it was awesome, and he's going to go to more now. I feel like everyone in this chat who wasn't at the convention, so Pinky Dash, Flutter Guy, and I, we all, like, heard from Burn. We'd all, like, seen the other conventions, and we'd seen like BronyCon, and uh, I think there was one more before that. I don't remember exactly, but we were kind of looking at them and going like, "Eh, you know, it's cool that they have what the conventions, else? but it kind of, like, to be perfectly honest, looks kind of awkward." And I'm not really sure what I'd, I'd it was be there for. So enough. But I think I, I just looking at this, and now with our opportunity to go and like speak with artists and stuff, like, I'm so ready to do like I'm I'm looking at doing three cons next year. Three pony cons. <laughs> I can't even like. I can't yeah. even express how amazing it was to do this convention with all these people who are passionate about something. Like everyone in really awkward cosplays and stuff, just uh, blends in and becomes natural. <laughs> like that's kind of a, a mean thing to say, but like there were so many really amazing cosplays, and then in fact, you know what? I can't even remember seeing a bad cosplay. So I take back that statement. When you think awkward <laughs> like conventions, you think awkward cosplays, but at that convention, like. Everyone was just super happy to be there, and it was it was an amazing convention. Like being able to go through the entire art gallery, art alley, and talk to all the artists physically. Especially, I got to see one of my favorite all time artists there, uh, Cosmic Unicorn. And Cosmic Unicorn had a table there, and she no actually way. specifically for this con brought a bunch of her original art pieces, uh, spe- like specifically done by her. And I couldn't help but su- but destroy my wallet. <laughs> And um, get a bunch of these uh, original art pieces by her. In fact, she didn't have it advertised that she was doing um, commissions. But uh, while I, when I was talking to her and talking about her art and how um, we do a show and we love all of her art, and I did, I was talking about my master study that you guys actually featured in the yeah, last ironically. episode. That was so awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for doing that. That was that was funny. I was I was laughing the whole time. I just like couldn't help but smile. Um, but I was talking to her about that master study, and uh, and how I, I got permission to do um, my master study. And you guys weren't sure what I did it for. I did. It was in the middle of my uh, uh, my class, and it was for a master study in the in during the during the mid. Yeah, I figured it wasn't your finals I because I knew your class lasted for, a bit. For my final, I did an unconventional self portrait. Right. Yes, that's what you did for your final. I wasn't sure which one came first. Yes, right. chicken yes. and egg. But I was talking to her about her master study, and it turns out that. She did uh, the trees and the hill there for a master study on Gustav Dorr. And then she added in Celestia later use, uh, digitally using the same kind of uh, medium. And then she threw that on her DeviantArt and added some cool uh, Photoshop effects to make it look like it was done on old canvas. And I ended up doing the master study of that. So I was chatting with her about that and so on and so forth. And she's like, oh, yeah. I am doing commissions. I just don't have it advertised. Huh. And I was like, "Oh, really?" It's like, could I um, get a commission done by you? And she's like, "Yeah, I'd be super happy to." So, I got a uh, sketch commission. I'll, I'll, I don't have a link here for you guys, but I'll throw it up on the screen for everyone. Oh, thanks. Now we have to actually watch the episode. podcast. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll get it to you guys if you want to see it early. But anyway, she 
uh, should she totally be doing or willing to do a commission? So I got a, com- a sketch commission done by her of my OC to Round add to your guys' oh, yeah. OCs, and <laughs> she uh, she's she made a commission. So when I came back to uh, the table to pick up the commission um, uh, the last day, she's like, "Oh yeah, I got it and it's done. Uh, if you'd like to see it." And but I made your first. I made a sketch. And I wasn't happy with it. I didn't like it at all. So I made you another one. So you have two. <laughs> so she made me two commissions um, for my OC in two different poses wow. that are just adorable. And it's like a really completely different than um, the sketches that I uh, got done for you guys. Uh, for for your sketches, it's using like inked lines and like really show accurate. When she did my commissions, she did a pencil sketch, like super traditional and super traditional shading so like if you can see it on the screen you'll notice that she doesn't use any of the outlines for the character she kind of has those outlines but it's all really realistic and it's really hard to explain i wish i had uh thought of that or that i was going to mention it this episode was going to be at you guys and less about me but (laughs) we have some extra time so well we still got some questions to get to so um, I just, uh, just yes. before we go, I'd burn, just stick those, stick all four of those commissions on screen at the same time. And, uh, while we just like, wow, thank you so much, man. Yeah. Like we were not <laughs> expecting <laughs> yeah. you to do anything for us going to this convention other than bring back stories and maybe, maybe catch like a guest or two for the show or something. This is, this is, well, I promise you guys, I, I do not regret, wow. I do not regret trusting you. <laughs> To run this episode, this I week. promised you guys pony swag, so I hope this. Uh, I hope this is enough. <laughs> indeed, oh, it yeah, is. This is like, <laughs> this is more than enough. Come March, indeed, we are Most going indeedly. to maul you in Boston. When I went around to each of the artist tables, um, I was talking to all the artists and about their prints, and they always had deals on prints like buy three get, um, um, get them all for cheaper, so on and so forth. So I always tried to aim for the deals, and then on buttons, um, pony buttons. It was always, you know, two dollars or a dollar a button. But if you buy five, they're like a dollar cheaper each or something. So I always got the button deals. So I just have an ungodish amount of buttons. You are a button, <laughs> and I have so many extra buttons. So I'm gonna send you guys freaking buttons. <laughs> just all the buttons. Oh my god! I'm, I'm seriously gonna maul yes. you. It's gonna. It's a long time from now. Oh yeah, but and I even remember. on the pre- I will come back and on my flight down to Boston, I will listen to this podcast again and I will maul you when I see you. <laughs> so even on the prints, I I'm pretty sure I have some extra prints there that hopefully I can get to you guys oh. safely. But Aww. yeah, no, I really Very appreciate nice. you guys making me that gift for my birthday and everything. So I figured this was an wow. adequate way no. to pay you guys back. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the Vector Club Weekly again, I thank you guys. Or not Vector Club Weekly, My Little Pony, My Little, My Little Pony Vector Club. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be us. So. <laughs> you're, you're talking yeah. about us, right? Yeah, uh, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and and my little now there's there, there's an obscure name drop. Yeah. All right, well, I I, I guess wow. we have some questions <laughs> to do. Oh. Uh, from 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 that, I'll um yeah, I'll, I'll move into the questions then. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got only two questions this week because only one person sent them in, and they're both the, however, kind of the same. and yeah, because they're from the same person. Okay, so question one that I've got this week is, can you guys give any tips about how to organize a large art project? Um, I'm not too sure whether it's a big one for yourself or with a whole group of people, but either way. No, what he meant was a, a, was a big uh, art collaboration. I uh, believe collaboration, the man in this email, he was talking about the fact that he had a collab going and it, it didn't go so well or it was hard to organize. So he was asking for tips in the future if he ever wanted to get together with a bunch of artists and do a collab. Uh, what would be some tips from us? Okay. Um, who wants to go first? Well, anyone? I'll say something. Uh, I okay. personally um, wouldn't really know how to answer this question. The largest collabs that I've done have been like birthday collabs and stuff with vectors. And with um, working with things like vectors, it's really, really easy to do a collaboration because people can just make their piece and they can just vector it and then you can just simply drag it into the other vector import the paths or even just um, paste something into a PNG because the background is always transparent. So it makes doing large vectoring um, collaborations super easy and super painless. But with large like artistic projects when you're using um, like more digital medium where you paint things in or different people do different portions where like someone will 
maybe do the characters and um, anatomy and proportions, and then someone will do the shading or someone will color it, so on and so forth. Um, I'm really not sure how to do a large collaboration like that, but if you're ever trying to do a collaboration where you're just putting in everyone's piece or putting in everyone's um, character, um, having transparent backgrounds always helps. Um, but other than that, I wouldn't have the experience to be able to help you with that question. Um, I'd for for collabs. Let's finish on the collabs um, for a second here. Uh, just just in general, it requires a lot of communication. It just needs you yeah. to always be on top mm -hmm. of each other. Sometimes you're gonna find some people are more reliable than others. You know, you, you might want to collab with someone who's super famous. You 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 might want to collab with JJ or something, but your art styles might not match. Or you know, he's super busy, so he, he might not get around to it. So usually, the first thing to do is just grab some of your artistic friends, some friends you make over uh, on DeviantArt or wherever you post your art. You freak who doesn't use DeviantArt. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just just get some get some like uh, people who have some time and are into the project. That's that's a really big thing. If they're into the project, they'll want to make the best thing that they can possibly do. Exactly. Yep. Just, just approach people and say, "Hey, I'm, I'm planning this. What would would you be interested in doing it?" And if they say no, well, go find someone else. It's not don't don't take it as an insult. It's just they probably have no, probably don't have enough time, or you know, the, the, again, art styles don't match that sort of thing, or they're just lazy. So like for I, this for this one in particular, yeah. I will take the blame on this one because apparently I didn't read the email thoroughly enough. But um, th this one, the guy sent in a, a very large picture that he did. Um, which was made all by himself, and um, it took him a long, long time. And uh, one of the parts of the questions was talking about, uh, you know, just in general, uh, how how do you how do you have tips for like reducing time or organizing something that you do all by yourself as well? So I thought we'd also go over, you know, how to do a large project by yourself. So does anybody okay. have anything? Does anybody has anybody done a large project by themselves? <laughs> well, I am doing uh, a large project by myself right now. I'm trying to do another comic by Egophiliac to go along with my other one, but I wouldn't be the right person to give advice on it because I'm doing terrible at it. I haven't touched it. I'm, for I'm like in the same boat. Two months now. <laughs> so I'm I'm doing one by Joy Dockme, and I'm in the same sort of situation. I know making for <laughs> if. For if you're talking about a single large project by yourself, making time is the most important part, especially being dedicated to it and being determined. So if you're just goof around and go home and then play like a computer game or an Xbox game or something, and you have a project that you're really passionate about and you want to finish, like that's definitely not something that you should be doing. Is if if you have like goals that you really want to do, like uh, there's um, time to be able to be determined and do things like that, and then there's free time to be able to game and relieve stress. But don't uh, consume yourself in a project. It's important to try to juggle both, but um, don't procrastinate. I guess that's the point of that statement. Yeah, I'm I'm horrible. I'm I'm terrible with that. <laughs> I have definitely been failing at not procrastinating. So. Yes, <laughs> same. Hey, you've been failing at not well, progressing. So I have been. I can't blame me. myself too much because with this ever free Northwest the convention and then trying to hold full a full full credit hours and then a job like. And now you uh, have trying to, to work podcasts. on a project like that in editing podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's my. Excuse. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think a big okay. I think a good tip is to uh, split it up into sections. Th this person yeah. in particular sketches and then vectors over it, and then he puts it all together. So that makes it a little bit easier when you vector stuff. Obviously, you're doing it quite separately and digitally, and it helps a lot. Uh, but just split it up into sections. Like if you have a background and then you have a pony. Then do first the pony, then the background. Like it's uh, it's uh, just split it up in different parts. And, uh, and if you you're a pony, if you do the background last with things like this, if the ponies are large enough, then you can usually like leave out details behind the characters if you're doing the background afterhand. But if you're moving the characters yeah. around, um, again, doing the background after will help because if you have if you have a large detail or something in the background that you make, like a fountain or a well or a statue, and then your character doing whatever your character is doing needs to be in front of that, it's going to be a lot of wasted time if you put a lot of time and effort making something like a, a focal point in the background if you just cover it up with the character that you made. So um, always like so with larger projects, you always got to be aware of where everything's going to go, and like that's where we're talking about sketching, like having like a nurse sketch or having a rough sketch uh, will come down to. Uh, if you you need to be able to know where your things in your finalized project are going to be, so yeah. 
um, kind of on a related note, um, with like splitting things up and, and doing things in parts, uh, we talked about this in our shading and lighting episode, uh, y- you kind of want to lay down, um, basically like an, an unshaded piece, um, and apply all your shading afterwards, so you can kind of get a consistency throughout the, uh, entire piece, um, kind of makes it a little bit easier, uh, to kind of visualize and, um, then you can also kind of show a work in progress as you go along and uh, maybe get critiques and tips from pe- other people. Being able to take critique from the people you're working with and then people looking at your project is definitely something that's really important. Okay. Yep, now one more question. Um, okay, question number two. What would you recommend to people who'd like to take, pa- take part in the bigger projects of the MLP fandom? Um, both of these questions were sent into an email by Mick. Uh, yes, Mick from Turkey. Shout out to Turkey. Thanks for sending yeah. us an email. You've <laughs> been to Turkey. It's actually really cool. I love it. I love Turkey. Tried. Yep. <laughs> yep. No. I've never been to Turkey. It's a cool place. <laughs> Small oranges. <laughs> so he's he's saying, uh, what would you recommend to people to like to take part in the bigger projects? Um, find them. Do it. Find them. I guess there's a, there's Do a lot it. of them out there. I think he's just talking Jump about like it. finding them. I think that's what he's talking about. Um, there's some stuff. Um. To plug our own group uh, at the MLP Vector Club, uh, if you're a vector artist, we've got uh, lots of group projects that we like to take on uh, when opportunities arise. Like uh, we've had a couple of background projects, and uh, we also uh, I've got the posters currently. Those new Walmart posters, we're trying to put them together. So if you're a vector artist, then uh, hop on by oh, yeah. there and I should fin- I should finish my one for that. <laughs> you should, pro- yeah, you should so probably should finish it too, like today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll so there, there's one that there. Out. Um, do you guys have any other suggestions for maybe non-vector art? Yeah, um, if you go onto Reddit, MLP Drawing School, there's always challenges and things that happen on that subreddit. Um, I mean, bi-weekly challenges, which in this ca- in this sense is every second week, not two times a week. Right. Can be taken either way. Um, but yeah, there's, there's all sorts of things run by someone who's quite well-versed in art, actually. And um, they... That they'll uh, help you if if you know you're not you're not too confident in your art, submit anyway, and they'll help you fix it up. The um that's why it's called the MLP Drawing School. It's there to help, and they do again competitions, not, not so much competitions, but challenges every second week, which get you to try out something new that you maybe haven't done before. Yeah, it's definitely a really awesome environment. Um, I love the drawing school, and the people who moderate it are really like they're art majors or continuing going for their art major and they're all really well um, versed in again in art and they're great at teaching and they're great at critiquing and it's a really um, awesome outlet if you're looking to like increase your artistic skills or just starting out in art and you'd like to contribute or even start sketching and things like that and you can definitely make a lot of connections too like if uh, you want to start a big project um, and you 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 will meet, you know, other artists through the MLP Drawing School on Reddit. So uh, it's a good way to, to kind of make those connections. Or if someone else is starting up a big project and uh, you've kind of talked with them and gotten tips from them or even given them some tips on drawing, it's a good way to, to kind of pair up. I think also to mention, like, not only in just the Drawing School, but on a little bit less of a frequent basis, um, maybe just in general reddit.com slash r slash... My Little Pony, because they have um, different things maybe for, you know, like a subscriber count. So they just recently hit 40,000 subscribers. So I think they're doing a little art thing there. Uh, occasionally, you'll, there'll be like a, a group little art uh, project that'll pop up here and there. Um, I'd actually say that there isn't a tremendous amount of giant art projects that are big in the fandom or whatever, you know. Uh, and I wouldn't worry too much about trying to get on those. I think you know, starting the smaller ones on your own is a really neat thing to do, especially if you've got some friends together that you want to do that in. Yeah, I mean, check out those places that we mentioned. They, I mean, a lot a lot of people will post if they're doing a, a large collab or something, they'll post in those sort of places looking for people to help out. So, yeah, put yourself out there and uh, opportunities will present themselves. Yeah, is there anything else you'd like to add for that? Um, uh, nope. <laughs> no. I, I think that's about everything. All right. Well, well, that's. Oh every- wait, no, nope, I got, <laughs> I got thing. Sorry, I've got one more thing. Um, the last thing I have to plug is I took pictures of everything in the occasion, over like two thousand pictures. 
because I was the only one with Everfree Northwest that had a fancy pants camera, um, besides a video camera. So I took tons of pictures, and if you would like to see those pictures, watch um, Everfree Radio, obviously the site where you're watching this, but if you're watching our YouTube link, uh, everfreeradio.com, and you can look forward to hopefully seeing an album link there um, with uh, all the celebrities and everything like that, um, all the uh, different Sweet. panels. So oh, so cool. Forth. cool. Uh, anyway, go ahead. Nice. All right, well, I think that's everything for this week. Uh, it was it was an interesting <laughs> week, to say the least. Coming into this with zero knowledge about what the heck we're doing <laughs> yeah. and then getting the amazing presence that Burn got us was just... I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Wow. I wasn't Once expecting again, to get an hour out of this. <laughs> I was not either, <laughs> and look at us. We're, no. we're almost going over time here. So quickly, I'd just like to plug the different stuff that we have. Um, we've got a DeviantArt page, uh, qdartcrusaders.deviantart.com. That's where you can go and follow along with all the art we talk about here. Um, it's going to be a bit of a weird thing this week because there's not really that much art to follow along with. But, you know, you can go and watch us there. And uh, as always, every single week when we have art that we can put in our favorites folder for you to go check out, then you can uh, check yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, we've also got a uh, Twitter. So that is yeah. twitter.com slash cutieartcrusade. So you can uh, send us tweets there or get live feedback if you ever need to get any information about the stream. Like if the stream isn't working, then uh, we'll let you know there or if we have some fun stuff for you. Uh, also, if you, I've had some people start tweeting at me. Twitter. Um, saying like, "Oh, what's your theme next week?" So if you, you know, if you forget the theme, then tweet at us, and uh, I'll be sure to remind you. We also have an email, so send in your uh, art submissions and questions. We've got an email, cutieartcrusaders at gmail dot com. Be sure to include art or questions in the subject line if you're sending us art or questions, because then we can sort it properly. And so you get it right. And finally, I right. <laughs> yeah, I get it right. Damn right. Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, and finally, we have a Facebook. Facebook.com slash cutieartcrusaders that you can go and like if you have big manly pony. <laughs> it's been a fair amount of activity on that actually this week. Yeah. yeah. So um, oh, yeah. a few people comment. And on that again, for the DeviantArt Gallery, um, I will probably be uploading, or each one of us, I'm not sure, I could, um, uh, maybe some some of us or one of us will be uploading um, the presents or the commissions that I got done. So we uh, they might be up. I'm. I will. T- how do I word this? I will try to get them to upload their presents to their DeviantArt, or I will just upload them all to mine, and then we're go um, include them in the DeviantArt gallery, and then those um, links on the DeviantArt of the commissions will be linked directly to the artists who did them, and then a non DeviantArt host link of the related art piece or the art piece that we featured if it is on DeviantArt, and then um, the commissions unfortunately will have to have a. Um, watermark over the top of them because they are not our art um they are art by the artists and they're also not for anyone else so mm-hmm. so yes. but it's if you'd like to see those in a higher definition they will be in the uh our DV- art gallery yeah and i think yes. we're also going to be starting using because i think this convention has really proven to us that we want to go to more and i think we're all going to make some real efforts next year unfortunately we kind of missed uh uh brony convention season <laughs> So ne- <laughs> next year we'll start saving up Can't the money. Gardens. We'll start. Uh, yeah, well, I, uh, none of us have made any plans for that. Mm. It's too soon. So no. <laughs> uh, we're gonna start saving up our money for next year and going out to these things. And uh, I'm in Australia. Yeah, well, you're gonna have to save a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're definitely gonna try to be in there. So uh, other than that, do you guys have anything else to say? I think I'm good. Right. Love you, burned. <laughs> <laughs> burned, you're amazing. All right. Well, I'm Rainbow Plasma. I'm Burned01. I'm Flutterguy317. And I'm Piggy Dash, and I love Bob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week. A lot. Bye. Thanks again. A lot, for a lot, a lot. Very much. Hello, and welcome to QDR Crusaders, episode 9 for August 24th, 2012. Welcome back, guys. Uh, my name is Rainbow Plasma. I'm the organizer and editor of the podcast, well, usually. And today I'm joined by... I'm Photograph317. I'm the art organizer, and I handle all of the art submissions. 
Uh, I am Pinky Dash, and I do all the questions. And uh, we're also rejoined today by... Burned a one, and I am the special guest coordinator and quite good at it, if I don't say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy, back for not even 30 seconds and he's already promoting himself. So Burned is back this week from Everfree Northwest. How was the trip, buddy? It was amazing. It was easily the best time I've ever had in my life at Everfree Northwest. I cannot even begin to describe it. I want to hear all about I'll it. I'll try. But... Yeah, we'll... yeah. <laughs> we'd fill up the podcast. <laughs> you have to tell us all the details after the podcast, but is there anything like... Like, what was, like, the best experience you had there? Easily the best experience? Well, uh, kind of two, because, sorry, I'll try not to ramble too long. <laughs> Typical but, burned. Um, <laughs> the first it. day that I was there, I got to go around the entire artist alley and talk to all of the artists. And, I, of course, I was mentioning our show and all of that things. I mean, I talked to huge big names. I talked to people like Pixel Kitties, Cat Whitney, John Azeko, Giant Mosquito, uh, Milkshakes, and even more I can't even begin to name. So many awesome wow. artists. Easily the biggest shining moment of my entire convention was uh, s- uh, Saturday. Nope, Sunday. Uh, it started Saturday. Uh, but what happened Saturday was I was uh, the only person with an EFR badge with a camera at the uh, charity auction. And during this charity auction, uh, a signed derpy by Tabitha St. Germain, who actually misspelled her own name. So derpy derped on derpy. It was really <laughs> But um, this derpy in auction was put up last second. And a, a, a man bought this derpy for $660 up at everyone in the room. Wow. Walked up to the guy who donated this derpy last minute and then handed it back to him in front of everyone. And it was the most, like, just touching thing that I have ever seen. And everyone in the crowd just stood up and applauded, running up, like, hugging this guy, like, shaking his hand. It was, it was magical, like, seriously. But I was the only guy with a camera other than the... Um, live streaming camera going on so I run up and I get a photo of these two together it's like can I get a photo of you for EFR because I'm pretending to be important so <laughs> what I ended up doing Sunday uh, the my shining moment of the convention you had a lot of fun so I think this has kind of improved our impression for <laughs> conventions in the future yeah definitely at at one point um, you actually texted me and were like you should see if you could get any of the like celebrities or people on the show who can uh, see if they'd be interested in doing the show I was like alright it's not a bad idea so I walk up to Final Draft um are uh, kind of like our boss or the leader of EFR. What is what is <laughs> get his actual description? But I walk up to Final Draft. And I'm like, do you think it would be too much to ask to maybe talk to Sibzy or Raven and see if we could get them to come on QDR Crusaders? And he looks at me and is like, well, that's not a bad idea. Hold on, come with me. So he drags me over to where Sibzy and Raven <laughs> are sitting before this convention panel started. And he walks up to them. And he's like, hey, Sibzy Raven, this is Burned One. Uh, he does a show on our network called QDR Crusaders. And he was curious if you'd both be interested in doing an interview or something on our show. And they were both like, oh, blah, blah, and like kind of asked me about it. And I kind of gave a description of what they might be doing. Like, oh, yeah, it doesn't sound like a bad idea. That's not a converse, con, uh, a, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? That's not a confirmation by any means, but it was really cool to be able to walk up to Sibzy and Raven and be like, oh, yeah. But, so huh? maybe in the future. That's a maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, Big maybe. Well, that'd be we awesome. can't <clears throat> beat around the bush any longer. Last week, we promised you guys that we would have Veggie 55 on the show. Unfortunately, that's not a reality, and let me tell you why. It be- came down to a little bit of scheduling issue, but Burnt came up to us a couple of days ago with a really weird proposition. He said, hey guys, I want to organize the entire podcast and tell you nothing about it. <laughs> so here we are, we're sitting down. Sunday, I go to the Traveling Pony Museum ran by uh, Inky Notebook, and they have a gloss printer, and they're printing off a... Uh, gloss prints of different artists that have donated their art to help support the traveling museum to go to different conventions. And I asked, can you print this photo of the two that I took of the man to give back the derpy and the person who donated to auction just for charity. And they print it out for me. And then I use a few connections and talk to the staff and talk to some really awesome guys in the staff. And we got the poster signed and with thank you notes by every single one of the celebrities there, all the VAs, uh, the singing voices and uh, anyone who was um, there and helping out with in that would use that worked on my little pony including travis the guy who donated the derby got him to sign as well and i got to give this gift to um the person who gave back the derby i got to give it to him personally live on stage in front of the entire convention and on every oh, wow. radio and yeah was that was easily, during the closing ceremonies that was really yeah. awesome to see <laughs> you can actually check it out on youtube but it's not about me, like it's it's about both of them, but it was awesome to be the guy that be able that was able to like share their story with the world, like to its full potential. 
So like that was easily my shinest, uh, shining moment of the convention. Be able to go on stage and give a speech about how amazing the both of them are. Another awesome experience at Ever Free was uh, I got to again meet all of the awesome celebrities and people on the show who I respect, and then even big musician names like Manda Pony and Acoustic Brony, both uh, Ed and Jimmy because Acoustic Brony is an uh, acoustic pair. Um, and Ed and Jimmy are awesome. And at one point when I was getting uh, the Cutie Mark Crusaders, Cutie Mark Crusaders signatures, um, uh, Manda Pony and, Acoust- and the Acoustic uh, Brony pair were um, just hanging out in the voice actor room. And uh, I was like, I wish I had a present for these two because they're so awesome. And, like, I love them both. I'm a huge fan. So, like, I got it. I had just printed uh, shirts, some T-shirts for the My Little Pony convention. So I ran all the way back to my car and then came back. And I managed to give Manda Pony, Ed, and Jimmy from Acoustic Brony um, T-shirts that I had printed of vectors from the My Little Pony Vector Club. And I got a picture giving it to them and stuff. And it was, uh, it was, su- it was super awesome to be able to give that to them. And even... Amanda Pony wore my shirt on the last day of the convention, so I got some pictures of him wearing my shirt, and then Amanda Pony, Michelle Kriber, and I were all um, with Ma- uh, Amanda Pony wearing my shirt. Uh, that was super cool. But and I got to meet, you know, William Anderson and all all the big names, and shake all the voice actors' hands, and just be like, thank you for doing what you do. So conventions, man. Uh, this by far ever free Northwest has been amazing. So I'd highly recommend for next year, and we're gonna have a. And if you're North, it's going to be a huge, like, larger outlet. be larger than this year. So, again, be a lot of fun. Cool. Aww. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll be hearing stories, <laughs> and amazing. I'm sure we'll be getting uh, <laughs> residuals from that convention for a little while in the show. So we're really excited uh, that you went, and uh, it seemed mm-hmm. to go really, really well.